Hello, YouTube. <laughs> All right. As you can see, I'm actually back in uh, good enough. Although it's feeling like a white knuckle experience again because I'm out on um, the highway. Not the interstate, but the U.S. highway. And uh, trying to get used to driving this big behemoth again. This is my uh, first time since moving the RV to storage to actually take it out and try to drive it somewhere, which is really nowhere. <laughs> I'm um, getting ready to head out to have lunch with my wife and um, it's the weekend and I wanted to take the RV out for a spin because you know, it had been sitting there for a long time. So the plan is to get the RV on the weekends and maybe take it out, uh, possibly when I have the kids, although that's questionable because picking up kids and parking and all that other crazy stuff may be kind of hard. Um, I figure out if I lost something. I lost my garbage. What happened there? Huh? The door flew open. Um, I thought I lost my garbage pail. If I lost my garbage pail, it flew out. Hmm. Anyhow, it's a little bit nerve-wracking because I haven't done this in a while. I'm trying to get the air on here. There are cars all around me. Alright, I got the AC on now. Whew. Having, having air conditioning helps. I think I might try to get a radio, maybe the same one I put into Little Blue, installed in here if I can get it working. Because having like a radio, having air conditioning, having all the conveniences makes the RV feel like it's a little safer than it is. Or I, I guess it stays, you know, as far as safety is the same. But when you have like air conditioning working and you have a radio to listen to, you don't feel like um, you're riding in a death mobile. Whereas if things aren't working and all the parts are exposed, you know, you're on heightened alert. I think that's what they do with like military aircraft and equipment. All the guts are exposed, you know, for the, um, the vehicle to keep you on alert. And um, good enough, it's almost completely back together. So adding the um, radio, if I can get that working, a working radio, um, air conditioning working, thank you to Rob the mechanic. If you haven't already done so, make sure you check out Rob's channel so you can see what happened with Robert um, when they did the repairs on Little Blue when I was stuck out in South Central Florida in the middle of Hurricane Dorian. But I am planning on just heading out to have lunch with my wife, but wanted to take the RV out to um, basically burn up some gas so I can put in fresh gas. My understanding is that if you use gas that's not like highest rated, you know, non-ethanol, um, that stuff collects water, believe it or not, and it can end up causing problems, like rusting tanks and other issues. So, the other thing is having an RV parked in one spot for a long time can ruin the tires. So all, all these things are suggestions that I've heard from viewers that have posted on the comments down below. You know, the, the video here. So there's stuff I kind of keep in mind. I do appreciate all those comments um, that you guys make on the videos. You know, I don't claim to be an expert on anything from van dwelling to cooking to living in an RV or driving an RV or fixing an RV. So I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> and um, I appreciate, you know, all the comments uh, from people who know or, you know, have, have safety suggestions and things like that. Because um, I do read them and then I keep them in mind and if nothing else then viewers who come to watch the video at a later date can benefit from those comments you know you save somebody some time money and maybe even their life um, so so my plan today is to actually try I might even try it for two nights today is Friday so I'm gonna try to stealth camp Friday night 
I might try urban stealth camping in a parking lot somewhere, seeing if the police harass me or anything. So I may try it. I may park somewhere in a parking lot and just camp out overnight in a city, in, in, you know, with the RV, just to see. I think if you're there for one night, it's not an issue at most parking lots. They're not going to make a big deal out of it. And um, then another night, I think I may try taking this thing to the compound. <laughs> yeah. We might try to spend the night at the compound in the RV. Talk about her, uh, HUD 3.0, mobile HUD 3.0. So the plan will be to, I think the first night I'm going to try, uh, I'm going to try to urban stealth camp with this thing at a Walmart parking lot. It's, I think that's the, the plan here. And then the second night, if I decide to extend it, I'm going to try to camp out at the compound with this thing. See if the police give me a hard time or not. Uh, now, to, to camp at the compound, it's going to be kind of like out in the boonies. So I'm debating how I want to handle things like the bathroom and stuff. Obviously, everything is functional in the RV, you know, other than, you know, the... Well, it wouldn't be an issue with the water leak from the city water because there's no pressure. But the RV does have a full tank of water. I had filled it up before I left the, um, the RV park. The sewage is all emptied out. I can use a system like I would a regular RV, but I'm not sure I want to create sewer, sewage, you know, because then I have to go dump it somewhere, which I might do. I may do that and then just um, use the RV like a real RV and then um, plan one of the weekends when I have the kids maybe to rent a parking spot at a campground somewhere that has RV hookups and then empty out the system and refill the water and stuff. So. That might be the strategy. Yeah, I mean, I got a bathroom, why not use it, right? Because I was thinking of like, maybe I'll use a composting or just bag it, bag it like I would in a, you know, emergency in a van or something. But since I have a full-blown bathroom, I think I'm gonna plan to use the RV, like a real RV, and use the bathroom and the water and the systems. It is a, it is a house, a tiny house on wheels. Might as well take advantage of it. And it'll keep everything, you know, working. and. You, I mean, when you're using stuff, you, you know, it keeps it working. Uh, if you park a, an RV and you don't touch it and you come back to it, there's chances are that it won't work, even though you haven't done anything to it. You know, gas get, becomes stagnated or, or water gets into it. And um, <coughs> even like the oils and stuff, dust and dirt may settle and cause problems. Or your battery dies, you know, battery's dead. So my strategy is going to be at least once or twice a month on the weekends. I'm going to try to take the RV out. So this is a, a dry run. This is just a test. I'm not going on any big field trip uh, other than, you know, just to see my wife um, and to camp out at Walmart and then to camp out at the, um, the compound for, for this first trip just to test it out. I'm debating if I want to uh, invest in some battery packs and start setting up a battery power system. I might do it. Just um, debating though. Cause see, when you get battery packs, if you don't keep them charged, they tend to lose their ability to hold a charge. So that that's like an issue. That's a potential problem. And they're not exactly cheap. Uh, where I was going to put the battery in the, on this RV was the bay where they had the um, 